Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, once again, we are going to be looking at comparing documents inside of your DMS system. So we're going to move along and get to our who, what, where, when, and why. So the first of all is the who. I am Ted Chris from the Affinity Consulting Group. And again, I, like Karen stated before, I will be leading you through comparing documents inside of your document management system. So the first thing we're going to address is the what. What is comparison software? Because at the end of the day, this is what we're looking at. Um, this is the tool we're going to be using um, as part of our demo today, at looking at how comparison software interacts with a document management system. So comparison software, pretty self-explanatory, it compares information. But more importantly, um, not only does it just compare information, but it's specialized to do so. So it not only looks for similarities, but it looks for differences. And it can do that in a number of different document types, which we're gonna go in and take a look at. But the next thing we're gonna talk about is where might you use comparison software? So um, we're gonna focus today on the legal applications. So um, you know, if we look specific to an organization, almost every organization has some sort of an internal legal department. Um, so what they might be doing is they might be doing work product reviews. So, you know, legal organizations or companies will create documents and at some point in time, there is a review of that work product uh, as it's being created, maybe back and forth with individuals or teams, or maybe even different departments to basically get sign off before that product is ready to leave the organization. Next example might be um, an HR de uh, department. You know, HR departments constantly have to keep their documents relevant. They're looking at policies, legal changes, um, and basically comparing, you know, maybe their existing policies to what their upcoming policies might be. So again, there's you know, that aspect of comparing what changes are taking place. Moving further on, they might, you know, an organization might also use this to perform financial audits. Um, obviously, you know, maybe um, we're talking about, um, you know, audits internally or externally, you know, so just something to keep in mind is this, this comparison software, the one we're gonna be looking at today, it will do spreadsheets. So again, you can compare spreadsheets if necessary. And finally, you know, we're going to move on and talk about closing. So obviously, every organization does perform some sort of a month-end closing. Again, this type of software can be used to facilitate that as well. Um, and finally, another example of, of an area where we might be able to use this in, this uh, product is when we talk about external document review. So any organizations that might handle litigation type matters or just situations where you're exchanging documents back and forth with external uh, parties, you know, again, this software can really be used to help in those instances. So next thing I, I put together for you is sort of an example of like that internal comparison that I was talking about. So again, this would talk to that uh, situation where you have maybe um, an internal uh, work product that you're creating. So, you know, we're talking about creating a document. It might go into a situation where it does, maybe you do an initial review and you're looking at what changes were made. That's where, again, a, a situation where software um, in this example might come into play. Um, and then finally, you might move into some sort of a final review. Um, again, another opportunity to leverage um, a specific uh, software program like the one we're going to be looking at today. Moving on to talking about our external example. So again, you're, you're exchanging documents back and forth with someone that is external to you. So again, you, you know, if it's, a if it's collaborative in nature, you might be making changes, they might be making changes. So you really need this piece of software that can really look, um, you know, look at the changes, be able to track them and really help you facilitate that workflow. And finally, you know, we move into the who aspect. So who might need this software? So really, it boils down to anyone that looks at a document that might be looking for changes from one document to the next. So, you know, really at an organization, that really could be anyone. 
you know, almost everyone that works at any organization at some point is faced with a situation, you know, where they need to look at changes from one document to another. So moving on from there, we're going to talk about pros and cons. So it's been our experience that a lot of people leverage Microsoft Word and its built-in comparison program as the tool that they use to compare uh, documents back and forth. And we're going to look at today, um, you know, some of the challenges that we have within Microsoft Word. But I've listed out sort of, um, you know, some of the, the pros and some of the cons. So obviously, the, the big pro for Microsoft Word is it's free. Almost everyone is using Microsoft Word um, in some capacity. And so, you know, you out of the box, you have this comparison tool that everyone um, at your organization can really use. So that's a really nice feature of that. You know, the next pro is obviously you can do Word documents, right? So as you're creating that work product, um, that might be a Word document and you're maybe saving saving it as different versions. So you might need to at some point in time go back and look at different versions. You know, that's what we would refer to as maybe a word to word comparison. You know, again, it's built to do that. It does that pretty well. Um, you know, the cons are basically with with Microsoft Word is sort of everything else, right? So, you know, it won't do other file types. It doesn't do Word to PDF. Um, it won't do PDF to PDF. There's a lot of document types that it just is not built to compare. It's only built to compare Word documents. You know, the next challenge that a lot of organizations, especially the, the legal ones that we're currently supporting, have document management systems. So Word out of the box does not have built-in integrations to document management systems. So it must rely on external software companies to basically create connections to it. So again, um, just can, can be a little cumbersome when you're really trying to work on looking at what your technology platform is and really working on a plan to integrate those pieces sort of together so that everything is interacting together. Um, you know, something that, that you'll see if you do research on um, MS Word compar uh, comparisons, pardon me, is that there has been notable reliability issues and misleading results. Um, you know, again, Microsoft's goal was to create a program to work on documents, right? As far as uh, compare, comparing documents, that's just not their, that was just not what it was built for. It was built for the creation, formatting of documents. So the software we're going to be talking about today is ComparDocs. So ComparDocs is one of the, the, the comparison software products that are on the market. Um, you know, the, the pros to ComparDocs, there, there's there are a lot, and I just didn't want to list them all. But, you know, the key ones I wanted you all to see is, is that it will do these different types of documents. So if you need to compare a word to a word, obviously it does that. It will do word to PDF it will do PDF to PDF, it will do Excel to Excel, it will do an Excel against an image. Um, it can do multiple document comparisons as well. So again, you can do Word, you can do a Word against a Word to a PDF, um, you know, a Word to a PDF, PDF and a Word. I mean, it, it sort of, you know, the, the options are somewhat endless as far as the different things you can do. Um, you know, the final thing to mention that I don't have listed is that you can compare up to four documents against an original, right? So that means that I can pull up an original document and I can add four different examples, maybe four different versions of a document and compare against the original. Again, that is just not something Word is built to do. It's built to do one a one-on-one -on -one comparison. You know, the cons, if there is a con on you know, compare docs is that it does uh, it does cost something, right? It, it, there is an additional fee for deploying this piece of software. So again, things to keep in mind when you're working on taking maybe suggestions back to your organization. So we're going to move into our hands-on portion of the presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize uh, my pre presentation here. Um, and so give me one second. And so what we're going to do, where, where I decided to start off with is, I'm actually gonna start off with my Microsoft Outlook for one second. So um, 
I purposely am inside of some training emails for you. And what I wanted to do is I already have compare docs uh, running. And so I just wanted to show you what that interface looks like. So when you bring up compare docs, it basically looks like this. So just wanted to talk to you about some of the things we can do before we actually hit compare. So first thing is just like Microsoft Word, you can do an original against the modified document. But in addition, you know, something that Word cannot do is I have this option to include. So I can include up to four different versions of something to compare against an original. Again, we're now entering into the area of what Microsoft Word cannot do. So it is not able to do this piece right here. Um, you know, the other thing that Comparadox allows us to do is control the output. So as we're going through our comparison, once it generates an output, we can control what format that output is in whether it's gonna produce a Microsoft Word document or a PDF. So we're about to move into another option of what Microsoft Word cannot do. So it is the report type. So you'll see that I have this one highlighted with markups and track changes. So Word can do a red line, but it cannot do a track change. I'm gonna show you what kind of message we get when we try to do this on Microsoft Word, but it basically gives us an error because it just isn't built to digest changes. So the next thing that we have, again, not within Microsoft Word, is we have this ability to include um, different outputs of the details, right? So we can include reports that might summarize what the changes are. We can have, a, in addition to that, we can include details. It'll go line by line and, and explain to you where a change has been made. And finally, you can include a change report. So for our demonstration purposes, we're going to just stick with the application default, but something I just want to hear, want you to hear me say is that when you generate a comparison, you have the ability underneath these settings to control not only how the comparison software, how it's going to run, different details it's looking for, and how it's going to digest those, but you can also control what those details are beside, based on the output you choose, whether it's a Word or a PDF. So without further ado, we're going to do some comparison. So from my um, outlook here, you'll see that I have an email with a PDF. So we're going to drag, we're going to take this PDF and what I'm able to do here, I'm going to minimize my Word over here for one second. And what I just want you to see me do here with my outlook is I'm going to take this PDF and we are going to attach it straight into ComparedOx. I'm going to move to another uh, email right here, grab that PDF, attach it to my ComparedOx pro Compare Docs program. So what's nice is that this is standalone. It allows me to work in a different way, whereas Microsoft Word sort of forces me to open up a Word document and then bring in my comparison. With this particular program, I can drag them straight from emails into the program. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave our set settings as such, and we're just gonna run a compare. Now, when I click on my compare button, I have the option to do a couple different things. So one of them is I can create a new document. I can also save into my net, to net documents, which is my document management system. For right now, we're gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna create a brand new document. I'm gonna simply go ahead and I'm gonna run my comparison here. And what we're gonna see is the system as part of its process, it's gonna look at these PDFs. Now, the thing I want you to keep in mind is these PDFs that I've attached are read-only PDFs, okay? So, meaning that I've flattened the text, so the text is not text searchable. So what's really nice about this product as well is that I can click on that I want it to perform, in this case, just an original OCR. So it's going to look at these PDFs, it's going to convert the, the image that it sees currently into text and then run a comparison against those images. So again, everything I just uh, sort of talked about right there are things that Microsoft Word is just not able to do, um, not all at once. Um, you can do these things in pieces, but as far as adding attachments that are flattened, that are not text searchable, and convert them on the fly um, performing an, eight, an OCR and then produce an output of a comparison of those PDFs. Again, this is sort of a new world 
that uh, Microsoft Outlook is just not able to do. Now you'll see that it can take a couple minutes because remember, it's doing quite a bit. It's looking at each individual attachment. It's OCRing those attachments. It's looking at all of the text, running the comparisons to produce our output. So again, it just lets us know what it's currently running on. Um, it's applying, it's, uh, you know, it's going running through its process. And finally, we're, we, we end up with our comparison. So in our revision panel, it lets us know all of the revisions that it's currently made. Any, it tracks our insertions, deletions, any moves or formatting changes. So what we see right here at the beginning of our comparison is basically our report. So it lets us know how long it, it took to run a comparison. It lets us know what documents it ran against. So it ran against my test pink and my test orange. It's given us some of those individualized statistics between the comparison. It also will let you know that when it's rendering words, if it sees changes, what those changes are color-wise. So insertions are blue, deletions are red, moves are green, font changes are light green, and character styles are sort of a dark bold. So what we're gonna do is just simply scroll down here and you'll see that we're starting to see some of these deletions that I've purposely done with inside of this document. You'll also see here some of those moves that I was referring to. Um, so again, it's highlighting by color all of those changes. So you have a couple different ways to navigate the, the, these changes. So I can not only just kind of do the traditional scroll down method and look at them, but I can also just scroll down here in my navigation bar, pick something, and it will forward me to that section. So again, um, this is an example of a PDF a flattened PDF, the flattened PDF conversion, and finally um, giving us that output within our comparison software. So again, this is just a, 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 that quick example of me taking documents from my um, Outlook and just dropping them into my comparison uh, program. Now again, as I had said before, I just decided to generate a new document, but I could certainly create a new document into Net Documents. And so we're going to move into incorporating the real incorporation of our document management system now. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to minimize this. Um, I'm going to just close out of my compare doc. And what we're looking at is my Net Documents program. And for today, we're going to focus on my TED folder. So I'm just going to right click on my TED folder and I'm going to go to the workspace or in this case maybe it's the client matter where my folder exists and so what we're going to go ahead and do is just do my drop down here and you'll see that I currently have this this um, back to the future demo doc that we're currently going to work on now what I've purposely done is I purposely launched um, a version a specific version of this document which is version number four so I just want to point something out to you. I'm going to drag this over here for one second. So I have my document checked out here. Now, for my purposes, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here. Um, actually, pardon me, I'm going to go into my folder here. So what I want you to see is that I have seven versions of this document. So when I come into my version list here, what we are currently looking at checked out here is once again, I'm looking at my version number four right here so again something to keep in mind here is my official version right now is a word document so i'm going to show you our first challenge when we try to compare a word a, a word document against a word document that contains track changes okay so my version number four does not have track changes but the version that I, i'm about to bring in does so i'm going to click on my nd compare button here I'm going to come over here to my net documents button and we'll see here is our demo document we currently have open when i click on it i can once again select inside of microsoft word what version i'm going to launch so i'm going to launch a comparison against our official version right here number seven so i want you to focus on what we're about to see so i'm going to go ahead okay here it's basically going to try and run a comparison but lo and behold it's run into an error because one of my documents, which it doesn't know which one is running comparison, it just gives me this sort of vague um, pop-up. It lets me know that one or both of the documents 
contain track changes. And so for the comparison purposes, it's Word is basically going to consider that all those changes are going to be accepted before it runs the comparison. So that's a big problem, right? When you're trying to compare a Word document against another Word document that's running track changes, the last thing you want to do is accept all the changes without knowing what those changes are. So hence, this is that first example of an issue that we run into with Microsoft Word is that you can't run word to word comparisons with track changes. So I'm gonna about to show you our next challenge. So the next challenge, I'm gonna go ahead and say, no, we're not gonna run that comparison. I'm gonna leave our document open. Now, inside of my document management system, I'm going to pretend that this PDF here was my official version, right? So just, you know, if you, hypothetically for a minute, if you can imagine you start off with version one, you work through your document, at some point you generate a PDF that might be the final version that you're about to share outside of your organization. Now, what I wanna show you, you know, challenge that we have is that if I click on this ND compare, now that I've made the official version a PDF, Word is about to get lost. So when I click on ND compare and I click on my net documents button, I don't see, even though you, you all saw that I recently worked on my Back to the Future demo doc, I don't see it listed here because the minute I convert it to a PDF, Word cannot find it. It basically, it cannot interpret what I'm trying to do. Again, this is another challenge that we have when we're talking about leveraging Microsoft Word as our comparison program. So again, this you know, can be somewhat frustrating for firms that might need to go back and compare a Word version against what the official document that they sent out the door. So, what we're gonna now go ahead and do, I'm gonna cancel out of here for a minute, and I'm gonna cancel out of here, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you um, how ComparedOcs would handle that same exact situation. So again, just gonna relaunch open my ComparedOcs, and something to keep in mind is ComparedOcs is connected to NetDocuments, right? It is integrated into it. So when I come over here, performing the same sort of thing that we did in Word, I can come over here, to my net documents. But what's what's very interesting here and what's important to note is that even when this document is still marked as a PDF, I can see it, right? Because, um, because ComparedOcs doesn't care about format. It only cares about what exists inside of a location. So in this case, I can come back in here and I can tell the system that I'm gonna compare version number four and go ahead and select that document first example purposes, this is going to be my original document. So again, here's my original. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pull open our um, one of our other versions, right? So I don't want to pull open the official version in this scenario. I'm going to instead compare against version number seven. So again, I was not able to do this right now within Microsoft Word due to uh, various formats in how the official version was a PDF. So before we go ahead and click the compare button, I want to point something out to you. And that is the first thing I want to point out is this information tab. So the system is tracking really detailed information that it received within net documents. So it's showing me for each of the documents I have attached, what the document ID numbers are from my document management system, what the names of the documents are, who the author was, when it was created, when it was last modified. For any organization that really does detailed comparisons back and forth, this is critical information. So next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we are just going to go ahead and generate our new document. But in this case, we are going to leverage our document management system. So we are going to say our comparison of document number four to document number seven, we are going to save inside of Net Documents or our document management system. So what the system's gonna go ahead and do is it literally is going into the system and it's going to grab those documents for us. And we have different options as far as what we can save inside of our document management system. For our example, we're just gonna create a brand new document. So I'm just simply gonna click okay here. Now, once I hit okay here, um, I'm just coming into my TED demo document right here. Um, I'm gonna open that up. 
And something we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to select our document type. So I'm just going to say for our document type purposes that we're going to say we're saving an agreement. I'm going to go ahead and select, hit select here, and just simply go ahead and hit save. So obviously what the system has done is it's run a comparison for us versus those two versions. And now it's displaying that output for us that already has its assigned document management number from our system. It's giving us our summary as we've sort of seen before. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to uh, open up a couple of things. So I'm going to open up my review panel, just like we sort of saw before. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna scroll down our document here and look at what we see. So as we're scrolling through our document, not only is our revision panel showing us what has changed in the document, but you'll see that since one of our documents was opened with track changes, I have the ability to right click and accept or reject the changes. So I can do a live review and acceptance of changes as I'm rolling through my document here. So again, I can look at any of my additions or moves, my deletions, and more importantly, I can go through and I can either reject or accept changes. So again, because it's doing a, um, it, it involves allowing you to do um, run track changes, it is collaborative in nature. And when you're comparing large documents, this is a key element to something that you need to perform. So again, if I wanted to, I could accept my changes. Maybe I'm just going to come in here and, you know, we'll just assume that maybe um, all the changes are correct. So we'll just accept all of our changes. Essentially, our document is up to date with all the changes that are made. Now I just simply need to go ahead and hit my save button here. And in doing so, reviewed my document, accepted my changes, and saved it back into my document management system. So I'm going to X out of here for one second, closing out Microsoft Word. But more importantly, what we're going to do is we're going to close out of here and we're going to refresh our location here and look at our documents. Now, something that is really important and useful is that with the way Comparadox interacts with my document management system, you'll see that not only did we save our new comparison here, but inside of the subject of our new document, it grabbed the original document that we were basically comparing from. So if your organization is the type of organization that likes to keep document comparisons separate, or maybe their collaborative work is separate, what's great about the way Comparadox works with your DMS system is it does track those document IDs, which are critical um, information indicators of how your document comparison process is running. So um, without, with, with all of that being said, that is really what I had to show you today is to really expose you to the ideas of what Word can do for you against a true document uh, comparison program. And more importantly, again, a little preview of how it might interact with your um, document management system. So without further ado, I am going to turn this over to Karen to sort of close us out. Um, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to join me today. Great, thank you, Ted. Great information and great job. Uh, if you are intrigued by Ted's presentation this afternoon and want to learn more about comparing documents in your DMS or have any other document management questions, I encourage you to take advantage of our free 30-minute DMS consultation. This is your chance to speak with one of the DMS experts at Affinity and get those nagging questions answered. Just reply to the follow-up email I'm about to send and I'll do the rest. We have more DMS-focused sessions coming soon. Our next one is on July 29th, when we'll be sharing security tips. And in August, we'll be debunking myths about cloud software and looking at workspaces in NetDocuments. You can find information about all of our upcoming DMS sessions by jumping on to affinityconsulting.com slash webinars. Please do share your feedback with us on the survey that follows. I hope you'll join us again soon. Stay safe and healthy, everyone.